Welcome to Jazz Time. JazzTime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to buy it at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at JazzTime.com. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Daytona Cosmograph Reference 126518LN on yellow gold with a Paul Newman black dial. I'm gonna to talk to you about the bezel dial case bracelet, give you a little history, compare it to the older model, try it on, and then give you my thoughts. So let's start. This is the Rolex Daytona line, and it is Rolex's arguably most famous, most iconic, and most desirable of their sports watches. And that says a lot because Rolex has a lot of different models such as the Submariner, Yachtmaster, Deep Sea, etc., etc. But the Daytona stands above them all because one, it is the most desirable, two, it is the most complicated, and three, it's the most expensive of the sports line. And there's many different variations of the Daytona. They make the Daytona with all precious metals as well as steel, as well as steel and gold on different bracelets on this Oyster, bra Oyster Flex bracelet, the rubber one that you see here, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of different variations, I think like 30 or 40 different variations, which makes sense because it's their best seller or their most coveted line. Okay, so let's talk about this one in particular. The one that you see in front of you, the case, as I said, is I'll talk to you about the case, it's yellow gold. Now, Rolex is making the Daytona in yellow gold, Okay, on Oyster Flex, they're making it on yellow gold, rose gold, white gold. No platinum on the Oyster Flex. So let's just focus on the Oyster Flexes here. Now, this one is made of yellow gold, and the case is not any different from the older generation, which is reference 116518. It's still the same case, which is an Oyster case. And how does it differ from other sports Rolexes is that the case itself is much more streamlined and it's using an oyster case. And what do I mean by streamlined? Look at these lugs and follow the case down toward the bracelet. If you look at some of the other sports watches that are made by Rolex, such as the Submariner or the GMT, they have a much more bulky super case that is angular. The Daytona being a watch that's derived from sporting racing heritage, it's gonna have this sleeker look, which is what you see here, which only makes sense, hence the name Daytona. And that spirit follows through throughout the case and allows this watch to look very streamlined, kind of like a race car. So it uses that Oyster case. Now that case has not changed from the older version until now, but I'll tell you about the things that have changed in just a bit. Okay, so that's the case. It's 40 millimeters. It has That also has not changed. The Daytona has been 40 millimeters and probably always will be 40 millimeters. That's my thumb to my index finger, the eight o'clock to two o'clock position, the longest distance across the bezel. That part is is 40 millimeters. Now the pushers are, are the thing at two o'clock and four o'clock. That's what activates, starts, stops the chronograph. And that makes uh, the watch look a little bit bigger than 40 millimeters because it has these protruding pushers, which you still unscrew. Rolex hasn't changed that. You still unscrew them. You press them to activate, start, stop at the top and reset at the bottom. And you do so with a screw down pusher. And that's to ensure that the watch stays watertight and you don't act accidentally activate the pushers while you're underwater. Okay, so that's the case. Now, let me turn it on its side, and you'll also notice that the side profile actually is not all that thick. It's still about the same as a Datejust, which is around 12 millimeters, considering that this watch is having a lot more parts in it because it has a movement that contains a chronograph, and a chronograph is a pretty uh, complicated movement. It really is not changing the diameter or the profile very much, if, if at all. So Rolex has figured out how to do that, and that's probably why this is one of the that's one of the reasons why this is the most popular and desirable line because they pack all this technology into it such a thin case so good to rolex okay now that's the case now let's talk about some of the things that have changed which is the bezel now looking at the bezel at first glance you might think that the bezel has not changed it's still a black ceramic bezel or as rolex likes to call it cerachrome bezel 
was basically just a ceramic bezel. And what has changed about it is that the outer rim of the bezel is now in gold to match the watch. And the insert itself is ceramic. On the previous generation, the entire bezel, including the bezel holder, was all ceramic. Now it's gold and ceramic. Gold for the holder and the insert itself is black ceramic, which I think makes it look um, uh, a bit nicer. It, it's less of this big block of ceramic. Instead, it's just the insert and it looks, in my opinion, quite a bit nicer. And it kind of follows the trend of how the Submariner and the GMT do it, which is they put the bezel holder in the material that is the watch is in, and then they put an insert. The only watch that didn't do that was the Daytona, which they put the entire bezel in ceramic, and I don't think it looked as good. And Rolex agrees because they've changed it now to what you see here. So that is a difference. It's not a massive difference, but it is a difference, and it looks quite a bit more updated and makes the bezel look a little bit thinner. Before the bezel looked a little bit too fat and now it looks a bit thinner. I like it. So that's the bezel. Okay, now let's talk about a bit about the dial. The dial, now some people call this the Paul Newman dial. Why? Because Paul Newman wore a Daytona and his Daytona was very similar to this. It had this black background with his bright uh, champagne subdials that you see and it had the red racing red is kind of a racing color so it has this racing um, tint to it or or uh, highlight to it that makes it look much more sporty but what about the dial exactly is different from the previous generation it is actually kind of hard to see unless you've seen them side by side or you've handled many of these the first most noticeable thing that I can say is that the hour markers the hour markers at two, three, four, five, six, all the way to 11, those hour markers are skinnier and longer. On the older version, the one that was just uh, discontinued in 23, it had a much fatter hour marker and shorter. So fatter and shorter on the older one and thinner and longer on the newer one. Okay, that's one of the big differences. Okay, and then the rest of the dial is pretty much the same, not exactly the same, but they made some very light changes in the brightness or the uh, color of those subdials. Before the subdials were a little bit more gold, now they're a little bit more uh, lighter in color, but it's not a big difference. But those hour markers are probably the biggest difference. Okay, now let's move on to the bracelet here. The bracelet is actually not changed from the older version. It's still an oyster, uh, oyster flex bracelet. And I have to say Rolex probably has the best rubber bracelet in the business because it has these two flexible curved metal blades inside the rubber, which allow it to have the optimal comfort and allow the rubber not to stretch and uh, form into some strange way. It will keep the same rounded form all the time as opposed to a, a rubber that had no metal insert it would lose its shape very easily and it also has these sort of little gills that you can see here or these air vents that allow the rubber to sit a little bit above the wrist such that the rubber will not be in contact with your that the entire rubber will not be in contact with your arm the entire time which allows you to still sweat so these little air vents allow the moisture to escape from your from your hand when you're wearing this watch. It's an ingenious system. Not only that, it also has a glide lock extension system, which I'm going to show you here, which allows you to adjust the length of the bracelet without having to use any tools. So in that sense, it's really fantastic. The only thing that is kind of close would be the AP uh, rubber strap on their offshores, and the offshore might have one feature that the Daytona doesn't in that the offshore AP, you can remove the strap without any tools. In this situation, you cannot. So that's, but everything else about this rubber strap is best on the market. Okay, now let's move on to the movement. Now the movement, you still cannot see it on these Daytonas. The only movement that you can see would be on the Platinum Daytona. 
which has an exhibition case back, but they still have a upgraded movement. The old movement was a 4130 movement. The new movement, which is what is in this watch right here, is a caliber 4131. It's more precise. It's plus minus two seconds a day, and it has a longer power reserve of 72 hours, which means the older power reserve was around 48 hours, which means that the watch is more efficient and it's doing its job better. It's just more precise and it, in every way it's better. Now we can't really see it, so I'm not so sure that that is a buying point. And I actually had to look it up to even know. So, but it is better and there you have it. Okay, now let me try this watch on. I'm six foot tall, 200 pounds. I have a 7.5 inch wrist. And as you can see on my wrist, it looks fantastic. 40 millimeters de definitely does not look too small. It's a, it's a streamlined watch and it's meant to have racing heritage. So you can't have a gigantic watch. If you want a huge watch, you'd have to go with a different one. I think the size is fantastic. Daytona is top of the line Rolex. It doesn't get any better than this. It's, it's the most complicated one and I really think it looks fantastic. Now for me, I like the Oyster Flex a lot and why? Well, first of all, the Daytona is a sports watch. It's not a dress watch. If you want a dress watch, Rolex offers many of those, the Sky Dweller, uh, so on and so forth. They just, the Day Date, well, there's a lot of fantastic uh, Rolexes that are dress watches. To me, the Daytona is purely a sports watch and putting it on a rubber strap makes it a hyper sports watch. It really makes it very, very sporty. And I like that because one, it's comfortable. Two, it's already meant to be a sports watch. So might as well go all the way and make it, you know, on a rubber strap. And I love the variations of it. And I think that the new releases of this uh, Oyster Flex Daytona just look fantastic. And this is probably the sportiest of all the Rolex Daytonas in that it has this uh, racing red in it. Okay. So look, if you want to buy this watch at the lowest price anywhere online, or even buy it for that matter, because you can't get it at the authorized dealer, you can go to jazztime.com or click on the link in the description below to buy it at the lowest price anywhere online. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.